again, I'm a cycle guy, 90 year. You look at stocks long-term and I look at everything long-term. It gives you perspective. One clear cycle stands out like a sore thumb, 90 year super bubbles, 1839 to 42 crash, 1929 to 32 crash. Um, and, and, and now 2020, 21 into 22 or 23 crash. This is a constant rhythm and that is meeting a 40 year cycle, which I've been <clears throat> preaching. I've been, I've said in the early eighties, we'll have the greatest boom in history and we'll see the lowest point in stocks in late 2022. 1942 generation bottom, 1982 in stocks, Bob Hope generation bottom, and now baby boom bottom in late 2022. So we got the greatest up cycle colliding with the greatest down cycle two, two and a half years later. And I do see the biggest crash of our lifetime. I've been saying this for years and years in the boom. And when we started to bust in 2008 and afterwards, and we never finished the process, we could have had this bust 2008 and nine could have gone into 2010 and we could have had that 2932 shakeout deleveraging and bigger crash. No, they turned on the fire hoses, didn't want to deleverage debt. The price of not deleveraging debt is to create the biggest asset bubble in history, which is going to burst harder and faster than, than that debt bubble would have. They've created a bigger monster and it's harder to control. You have to ask yourself, what takes longer to deleverage debt with chapter seven and chapter 11 reorganizations, which takes months or years, or just to have markets crash suddenly like they did in, in February, March last year. You know, that was 40% global in stocks, five weeks. That's how fast a financial asset bubble can deleverage. Now, I do not think you'll have a basis for a Federal Reserve or central banks after this crash. People will say, oh, all they did was create the biggest bubble and crash. And oh, you know what? You go back to when they were created, 1913 for the first time, 20 years later, Roaring Twenties bubble, 1932 crash, 33 bottom in depression, 25% unemployment. This is what central banks do. We, we've been in a down, a slowdown in the economy since 2007 because the baby boomers peaked in spending. That's something I was predicting for 20 years. That's our 40 year in our demographic cycle, which is quite precise. And so what have we got in quantitative easing to fill the gap? Well, quantitative easing has created the biggest financial asset bubble. You look at stocks today and think we were in the greatest economy getting ready to get way greater. And what we've really had is, a, is an unrecovery. You know, we've been growing at 1.65% since the 2009 bottom with massive stimulus, with almost with very low inflation. We should have high inflation and high growth with this much stimulus. And it's because they're fighting a declining tide. And, and the cost of this, not allowing recession, not allowing the bubbles and the debt to shake down like, like, like we normally do, uh, we've got the, a monster financial asset bubble. The most important number in the world right now is $520 trillion. That is, by the way, 6.2 times 84 trillion GDP in financial assets, stocks, real estate, bonds, that sort of stuff. That I, it, normally that would be two times GDP, maybe two and a half in a normal boom. Yeah. Uh, debts at 253 trillion, that's off the charts, over three times global GDP. And but normally that'd be one and a half, you know. So we but they they use this financial asset bubble to offset the debt deleveraging and the debt bubble bursting. And now we have a bigger monster. And I am predicting within weeks or months, the, the, the central bank's just going to lose control over it. It's just going to burst. If you notice, and, and this is the reason for my prediction here that we're going to see a 40% plus crash in yeah. just the next few months. And the next new low would project 2100 on the S&P 500. That would be 45%. From the recent top that would mean the tech stocks would go down even more maybe 50 percent so i think the next crash what people finally see is is the central banks keep pumping up the economy against these downtrends creating this monster bubble that keeps wanting to burst and deleverage along with the debt and and then and, and it's a losing battle and when and when people say well well yeah don't print another i'm sorry don't don't bother to print another 10 trillion this time this thing's over this thing they lose control and that's just going to be the first crash and we'll end up by late 2022 or early 2023 back down 
you know, 80 to 90 percent to, to basically erase this entire crazy bubble. Now, remember, greatest bubble in history has occurred from 2009 into 2021 with the weakest recovery in history is the biggest disconnect between stocks and financial assets and the real economy. And guess which one wins? The financial assets and the stocks have to come down to reality. Hundreds of trillions, at least 200 trillion minimum of this 520 is going to disappear in the next two to three years. And that does not cause a recession. That causes a depression. There's no way out of this. You can't keep fighting reality by just printing more money, something for nothing, and expect it. The way you actually deal with it is you restructure debt, get rid of zombie companies, clear the decks so the economy has room to grow again and, and, and resources and people can be deflated. It doesn't, none of that happens when the government keeps covering everything over with free money. Banks don't have to write down loans. Oh, zombie companies don't have to fail. So what do they do? They limp along, employing people barely, surviving barely. That's our economy. That's why it's growing at one and a half, 1.6%. Uh, and the baby boomers are in a downward spending trend. And the millennials will not turn up until 2023, 24. And that's what's going to, that's the good news. That's what's going to pull us out of this. If we let the bubble burst, deleverage debt, deleverage financial asset bubbles, that's what we did in 29 to 32. And guess what? We came screaming out of that downer. It was nasty, but we deleveraged a lot of debt and financial bubbles. Right. And that allowed the economy to grow. You can't grow from here. As Glenn Beck said in, a, in an interview I did with him recently, you know, bull markets don't start from these heights and valuations of bubbles. It's impossible to start a new bull market. Our economists saying, oh, we're going to have a new bull market with COVID. No way. I say no way. These economists don't understand economics. That's why I stopped taking economics in my third course and studied business instead.